In this online lecture, I want to talk about how to determine if you might get more of one product than another product in benzene reactions. And we only need to look at three examples here to understand how this works. So for instance, let's say I have this molecule right here and I'm adding H2SO4. Remember, we know a few things here. Number one, we know H2SO4 adds on an HSO3 group to a benzene ring. And we also know that if there's a substituent here already on the ring, if he happens to be in this case, notice, an ortho pair directing activator, that means we know to add the sulfate group ortho to him as one product and pair it to him as another product. Now, what we're learning in this lecture is, can we predict which one of these would be in a higher percentage? And the answer is, we can. Simply put, for this particular case, we would get a higher percentage of this product and a less percent of this product right here. And the reason is very simple to understand. Think about it. How many ortho positions do we have in this original molecule? There are two. Where when it comes to para, there's only one possible para position. So just by probability and statistics, we're saying that in this case, the ortho product is more favored because there's more chances of landing on that product. But it's not always this simple, because think about steric issues. Think to yourself here, which product probably has more steric strain? And of course, the answer is the ortho product, because those substituents are closer together. But however, in this particular case, the ortho product still wins out. However, look what happens here. The more bulky we make the substituent on the benzene ring, Watch how this changes things. Again, if I add H2SO4, he's still an ortho pair directing activator, which means we'll still get an ortho and a para product. But because this group is a little more bulkier, what happens in this case is now we're getting roughly a same percentage or a 50-50% mixture here, meaning we'd get equal amounts of both in this particular case. Now, of course, there's a lot of gray areas here, which means you can't predict the percentages of products for every reaction. All we're learning right now is that it is possible to get a 50-50 mixture in this case. However, in some extreme cases, like this example here, we can be safe with our prediction. Again, if we add H2SO4, we know that we can possibly get an ortho product, and we could also possibly get the para product. And in this extreme example, it's a no-brainer. Which product would have to be in a higher percent? We would see that we get the para product in higher percentage simply because the original substituent with those four carbons is very bulky. So putting the SO3H close to it in the ortho position creates a lot of steric strain. So the SO3H creates a lower energy, more stable structure when it is para to the substituent. So therefore, we would get the ortho product as a lower percentage. So my point is, is that as long as the example is extreme, we can make a prediction. But there are cases that are gray areas where you would have to go into the lab and run the reaction to see exactly which product is in a higher percentage. But what we're learning here is that in organic chemistry, we want to walk into our test at least understanding the principles discussed here. So that just in case we have an extreme example on our test, we know how to predict the higher percentage product. So our key point here is basically this. The bulkier the substituents, the higher the percentage of para product in an ortho-para orientation electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction.